Hello, Todd Mariana, Deep Grooves Mastering, and today we are going to demonstrate the diamond record cutting stylus that we have developed. We offer them in two formats. We've got long shank Prestos and we've got 320 style Neumann shanks. Today we're going to show you how to cut with the Neumann 320 style record cutting stylus. Uh, we're going to go over all of the pitfalls. We're going to go over how to avoid static and we're going to actually play a cut once we're done. And this is going to be the theme for the entire video is doing things that will actually reduce static. And this is the very first step, is to make sure that the things that you're touching aren't going to uh, transmit charge onto your fingers and hands, to make sure that the things that you're doing aren't going to create static just from friction. Uh, these gloves are anti-static versus your normal medical grade white rubber glove. So before you start handling anything in this process, you're going to want to start with a pair of nitro gloves. And today, we're going to demonstrate all of the steps that you're going to want to follow in order to avoid static and also get a nice clean cut. So let's get started. Uh, this is the Neumann lathe that we're going to be using. This is Charlotte. Uh, we're going to be cutting plastic on her. So now we're going to demonstrate how to actually insert and orient the diamond stylus into the cutter head. As you see, I have my cutter head, my SX-74, uh, in the stylus insertion and orientation scope. Uh, right now, currently, I was set up to cut lacquers, so I'm going to be changing out from a sapphire stylus to one of my diamonds. So I'm going to turn this a little bit here for a second so that I can um, get the heater wires off. Just removing the heater wires from the terminals. And now for uh, Neumann users, you get a specific insertion and orientation tool. Um, other users who are using the long shank Prestos will not have to go to you know this extreme to change out the stylus. It's pretty simple. You just unscrew uh, the holding screw, you remove the old one, you insert the new one, and you screw in the screw again, making sure that it is oriented appropriately. Uh, with the Neumann, you have this special little torque tool, and you never really want to pull up or down. You're just moving back and forth. So now I've removed the stylus, I'm going to only hold it by the heater wires. You never want to touch the stone itself. You also, in the case of a Neumann, do not want to touch the metal shank. Uh, in the case of long shank Presto users, you can certainly feel free to touch the shank, it doesn't matter. Uh, but you don't want to get debris inside of your torque tube for a Neumann user, so please be careful with that. I'm going to take one of the uh, diamond styli here, and, and you want to make sure that you're going to keep the heater wires, you know, pulled as they are right now. You want to make sure that they're not going to bunge up inside of there, so, you know, they're still taut, as you see, keeping them away from the actual diamond stylus inside of the capsule. So what we're going to do is hold on to them like this and I'm just going to simply pull the top of the capsule off. Right? And now again, we only want to hold the heating wires. So this is a 320 style shank with one of the deep, deep grooves mastering diamonds. So what we're going to do is just insert this in now appropriately. There is an orientation to these, okay? So the heating wires come off in the opposite direction as the way that the mirror surface faces. So the mirror surface right now, I am holding towards the camera. This is the opposite of the mirror surface. So the mirror surface is where the actual chip is going to cut off. That's the thing that's digging in to the record. And we're going to have chip come off in the opposite direction of the heating wires. So on the Neumann here, the heating terminals are in front. So we're going to take this and just gently insert it into the torque tube. 
now it's just gently seated in there. We're gonna use our special tool to actually work it down in because these shanks have a taper to them. Uh, when you settle it in, that's what holds it in. You do not wanna push down. Not apply downward pressure, but we're gonna work that in back and forth. Now that it's seated in there, I'm going to actually go ahead and take a look at it through the scope and orient the, the facets. I find it handy to actually use a little clip-on light at this point. And um, inside of the scope, there is what's called a datum line, which goes across the reticule. And uh, I'm able to then orient the mirror surface based on that reticule, reticle, and we are almost there. If it's not oriented appropriately, then you'll have crosstalk from one channel to another. You want to make sure that your tube is as clear as possible of any sort of debris. And every here and there, it's a good idea to run a, a pipe cleaner through that's been dipped in a little bit of acetone. And so you'll dip it in and then you'll let it sort of evaporate a bit, air dry, because you don't want to stick this thing sopping wet into the tube. You absolutely do not want to have any sort of acetone kind of pool up and drip out of the end of that tube. And just be very careful. Once you see it start to reach the end of the tube, that's all you need. You don't have to run it all the way through. You just want to make sure that the bend right here is as clean as possible. So maybe every five, 10 cuts, use a little acetone on a Q-tip and just sort of roll it on the front and roll it on the back. And that's all you need to do. You want to make sure that there is no buildup in any of your tubing. Uh, buildup will not only cause more friction to occur as more material passes through, it will also create the scenario where you know, you'll have less uh, actual pressure and less suction. So you'll have more of a opportunity to start to drop chip onto the disc. So right now, I kind of almost hear a little whistle. I know my vacuum is you know, running at full capacity. If there's chip in the tube, it won't sound like that. You know, if there's a little bit of a buildup in my vacuum hose, uh, especially at the point of the chip jar, it won't sound like that. Use a little bit of this uh, talc or baby powder. We're gonna put that onto the spoon here. And again, that's just gonna go down the tube and work its way down. It will coat the inner walls of the tube and it will just reduce friction. This is where I have my Variac installed and set up. Uh, this controls the actual speed of my vacuum. For cutting lacquer, you know, I have it on a relatively conservative setting. Uh, when I go to cut plastic, I generally turn it up. <laughs> Maybe not full blast, but I generally turn it up, you know, usually right around 75% or so. Um, so you can hear, this is actually slowing down or speeding up literally the speed of the blower motor for the vacuum. And you want to be aggressive. For cutting plastic, you want to be aggressive, more so than you would be for lacquer. It just works out better. So here we are in the back of the lathe, and I pulled the panel door off, and I'm gonna show you my chip jar real quick, only because I want to mention that before you start cutting, especially plastic, you really wanna make sure that your tube is clear. We already went over um, you know, putting a little talcum powder down the tube. Uh, I also generally will pull mine, because sometimes what it does end up happening is a little bit of plastic will get caught up right in here, a little ball of it. And so, uh, you know, I make sure that my tube is cleared out. 
and we're ready to go. As you see, I have been cutting both lacquers, that's the black, and also plastic. Plastic will come off the disc as what looks like clear, um, you know, this sort of white plastic material. Uh, the discs appear black, but they're not. They are black cores with a glossy uh, clear plastic coating. And what you are actually cutting into is the clear plastic coating. So your chip should look clear. If it doesn't, you're going way too deep and you should stop immediately. In order to combat static, we are going to use a, an ion generator, right? So there is an ionizer built into this uh, air purifier. And so when I run the air purifier, it's actually discharging, if I have this setting on, it's discharging uh, ionized air through the top here. So as I'm pulling off the protective layer, so I'll be pulling it off this way, I'll actually have the ionized air running over the disc and that will negate the static electric charge. One thing too, because these are CNC machines, sometimes there's a little bit of flare. So you kind of want to just go over it with your finger like this and just kind of get rid of any of the loose little bits. I have my blank here and I'm ready to uh, prepare it with a little bit of turtle wax. So what we do is we use a clean, and I stress this again, a clean microfiber rag. And we're just gonna spray a little bit of, uh, and I tend to find that this stuff works well. This would be uh, turtle wax. Okay, and it's the no streak formula. And so we're gonna take a couple of sprays of this. And we're just gonna wipe our blank. And what this does is it sort of lubricates the surface. Again, it, it helps to minimize static. And it's, it just is sort of a lubricant for um, the cutting stylus as it passes over the surface of the disc. I'm going to... Uh, Dust the disc off. And now we're ready to start heating up the disc. And so you wanna make sure that it's, the heat is evenly being distributed. This is what I use to make sure that the uh, disc is at the proper temperature. It's just a regular heat gun. You can find them at uh, you know any hardware store. I, I tend to find that the right temperature is somewhere between 90 and 100. So if your disc gets too hot, just move your lamp a little bit further up. Um, another thing to note, I'm cutting into black discs, so they do get hot very quickly. Um, if I was to cut into a clear blank, which there are plenty of clear plastic blanks, uh, you're going to need to lower your lamp much closer to the surface of the disc in order to get it to between 90 and 100 degrees. Uh, the very first thing that you're gonna wanna do is set your depth of cut. Since I was just cutting uh, sapphire into lacquer beforehand, uh, my depth of cut is totally different. I happen to know from experience that the diamonds are gonna be shorter, so I do know that I need to lower my suspension a little bit here. Um, but where I need to lower it is the question. You don't wanna make these adjustments as you're cutting. It's best to do a little bit of a test cut Check it with your scope to make sure that it's the correct width of groove. And if you need to go lower, don't drive it in as you're cutting. Release your cutter head, adjust your height a little bit, bring it back, do some more test cut, read it with your scope, and you can do fine adjustment, but your coarse adjustment of height of your suspension and or in the case of, you know, um, a Presto cutter head, using the Presto long shanks when you're adding weight to your suspension, uh, 
you know, again, do your coarse settings without actually cutting. You can do fine settings while you're cutting, but if you really make a big change as you're cutting, uh, you can deteriorate the knife edge on the actual diamond itself, in which case, you know, it's gonna sound bad. So, and to make sure that our heat is set appropriately, and for cutting plastic, you want that to be set somewhere around 0.4 amps at 12 volts DC. We want to make sure that we are going to be at 0.4, which is gonna be about right there. That's what's good for me. This might be slightly different for your configuration, but about 0.4 amps at 12 volts. Also here, as we're actually doing cut, uh, we can make minor adjustments to our depth using this knob right here. You're gonna lower your cutter head as gently as possible. You absolutely do not wanna come down hard. So that's what we're going to do here, is come down very gently, and we're gonna just see where we're at. And right now, I'm cutting a very small groove, I can tell that. But let's look. And that is actually right around a three mil groove. That's actually exactly what I want. I just happen to be lucky, <laughs> but that is perfect. At this point, you know, I could make very minor adjustments here. I can make very minor adjustments to my depth setting as far as my potentiometer is concerned on the front panel. You can make minor adjustments to the knurled knobs so that the groove that you're cutting looks right. You definitely want to watch underneath the cutter head. You want to make sure that, you know, as you are cutting, no chip, none of the plastic material balls up under the actual stylus. If it balls up under the stylus, what will end up happening is inevitably the disc itself will start to push that ball underneath the cutting point of the stylus, in which case the stylus will go up and it'll come right back down onto the disc. Again, that's a nightmare scenario right there. That's how you can chip your stylus is having movement like that. You know, if the cutter head comes down too hard from you pushing it down too hard, or if it skips because there's a little ball of plastic that's building up underneath there and causes it to jump up and down, you want to avoid that. So, you know, this is why we're going through so many great lengths to reduce static because unlike lacquer, lacquer when chip drops, you just will have this hair that will kind of inevitably work its way towards the center. Plastic chip, when it drops, doesn't do that. Plastic chip tends to, because it's so staticky, it will ball up and it will come together underneath the tip. And if you are cutting with heat, you also run the risk of melting that chip onto your stylus, in which case, you know, it'll carbonize onto the diamond and no amount of acetone will get it off. So you wanna make sure that you preserve the lifespan of your diamond by making sure that all of your chip is being removed. And as you're cutting, you probably wanna you know, be a little bit more mindful than you might when you're cutting lacquer. I'm gonna spray the disc real quick with nitrogen. And also too, every now and again, it's, it, it helps to spray a little bit onto the tip of the diamond because that will help to discharge any static electrical charge that's built up on the tip. It helps actually. Uh -huh. So we're ready to go. I'm gonna run my vacuum. I've got my audio all set up. The disc is at temperature. I'm gonna come down very gently. And we'll do a little spiral here. I'm seeing modulation. And normally I don't actually monitor over speakers while I'm cutting live, but for this demonstration purpose, I figure it might be you know, good for you guys to actually hear what I'm doing. And of course, you can hear the audio in the cutter head itself. It's much like a speaker on the inside. It's a uh, moving coil around a fixed pole magnet. So, we just did the cut. Here it is. Uh, we're going to play it for you and we're going to show you guys 
uh, what the unmodulated grooves sound like and then what the audio actually sounds like. So here we go. Those were unmodulated grooves at the beginning of the record. And then here's the audio. I hope that you've enjoyed today's demonstration. And the main point to drive home is that we want to avoid static. Most of the stuff that we've done today, above and beyond the standard steps for cutting, is to avoid static. Uh, that's going to limit the likelihood of damaging the actual tip of the stylus, uh, and it's going to give you the best sounding cuts. Uh, you know, please be careful with your stylus, and it will give you a good long life. Look forward to more products uh, and innovations coming from Deep Grooves Mastering in 2014, and uh, we'll see you soon.